Former CNN host Chris Cuomo is suing CNN for $125 million, quote, as a result of Turner's indefensible choice to unceremoniously fire him. Cuomo has been damaged in countless ways. So that's from his legal team. Cuomo is reportedly calling out his former co-workers, Jake Tapper, Brian Stelter, and Don Lemon. He says they smeared him on air while commenting on his firing for advising his brother, former New York governor, Andrew Cuomo. And the dirt throwing didn't stop there. According to Cuomo's legal team, quote, CNN's highest level executives not only knew about Chris's involvement in helping his brother, but also actively assisted the governor both through Chris and directly themselves. As CNN has admitted, network standards were changed in a calculated decision to boost ratings. When those practices were called into question, Chris was made the scapegoat, end quote. New York Assemblyman Ron Kim joins us now with his reaction. Welcome back to Rising. Thank you for having me back on. Yeah, we're so glad to have you with us. So, you know, it's interesting. Chris Cuomo is trying, you know, to make himself the victim here. And, um, you know, maybe he has a point that the complicity in CNN goes much deeper than him. But, you know, he is <laughs> not a sympathetic figure, I don't think, for, you know, his involvement in covering up uh, or assisting, aiding, giving it counsels on how to cover up or how to deal with just the reprehensible things that uh, that his brother was doing. You know, what is what is the deal with this family? Yeah, it's, he certainly is not the victim. I think him and his brother likes to think they're victims, but they are clearly have engaged in abusive behavior. Um, and, and Chris Como broke journalistic integrity by getting himself involved um, with political matters when he should have been a, a fair reporter, an investigative reporter in the situation. I mean, it's clear. I mean, everyone understands why that's wrong. And he should be held accountable. The CNN should be held accountable. Everyone involved should be held accountable. And for him to now turn around and play the victim is ridiculous. Well, Andrew Cuomo has been fielding calls from p potential supporters as he considers a comeback campaign for governor. According to CNBC, the former governor's aides have conducted their own internal polling on a potential matchup between Cu Cuomo and his replacement, current governor Kathy Hochul. Uh, meanwhile, just this week, a New York State Comptroller audit revealed that under Cuomo, the New York State Health Department concealed over 4,000 nursing home COVID deaths under Cuomo's leadership. The, also, the audit also found that New York health officials sometimes underreported the full death toll by as much as 50 percent from April 2020 to February 2021. And so, Assemblyman Kim, you, were, you, know, you have been all over him uh, you know, for this, this scandalous uh, treatment of people living in nursing homes in New York. Uh, the way that he resigned in some ways allowed him to escape accountability for for that element of his leadership which i feel like might be enabling this flirting with running again do you think that uh first of all how serious do you think this this run is or that that he's contemplating i mean i i think he's floating it out there to try to change the topic i mean the truth is we have now indisputable evidence from three independent investigations that the former governor Andrew Cuomo suppressed life and death nursing home information from the public at the peak of COVID. I mean, I think the next logical question is I'm trying to answer why. Who profited from covering up nursing home um, death toll numbers? All you have to do is follow the money. You know, Andrew Cuomo pocketed $5.1 million on a book deal uh, that he won in a bidding war that, that coincided with the suppression of nursing home data. You know, he, he gave uh, a get out of jail free card to his top donors that, you know, and he retroactively took away people's right to recourse in nursing homes. All these things, I believe, is, is criminal public fraud and he needs to be held accountable. And he is a master at dodging accountability. And you're, you're right. If we had gone through the impeachment pro uh, process, he would have had due process and he would have um, been exposed and we would have went to discovery and all the facts would have come out and he dodged that. Um, by falling on the sword for sexual harassment uh, charges. Yeah, the, the ego of this man, he has, at, at this point, right, he deserves much worse. He's, he's kind of gotten away with the more serious crime. And, and to have, the, to, have the, the, to dare to aspire or even openly discuss seeking office again, I mean, it, it's just, it's, it's unbelievable to, to, have, to have that much ego. 
Yeah, he is clearly a narcissistic, you know, egomaniac. I think everyone understands that. He should be spending most of the campaign dollars and getting therapy. I mean, but the truth is, like, he's been in this game of politics since he was 14 years old. This is all he knows. A, a normal, sane person would walk away and spend time with their family, be contrite, and apologize for all the mistakes you made. And maybe, maybe in a few years, you could make people, the public would forget, forgive, and you can make a comeback. But he's trying to gaslight and, and, and dominate the narrative. This is, this is the only thing that he knows, and it's very sickening and sad. You know, Ron, uh, regarding the nursing home deaths, and I even kind of have this question about CNN and, and Chris Cuomo, in both scenarios, I can't imagine that these two are the only ones who were involved in these various different scandals. I mean, clearly with Chris Cuomo, um, you know, he, he wasn't the only one who decided to put his brother on television. There was definitely multiple people who were thinking this was this would be a really good idea. There's definitely, I think, multiple people that were involved in the nursing home uh, situation in New York, the, the terrible scandal there. So what is happening to these other people? I mean, I, you probably don't know about the CNN stuff, but give us insight. Are others being held accountable in New York for the nursing home deaths? Right. The Department of Health, as the recent controller's audit pointed out, uh, protected political interests and industry profits over saving people's lives. This is the, one of the largest state agencies in charge of protecting people's health and, and their lives. And they sold us out for politics and short-term gain uh, for the industry. Uh, the former governor, the former commissioner, uh, anyone who's involved at the bureaucratic level must be held accountable. Otherwise, what kind of message are we sending to other mayors, other governors, other commissioners, other future politicians of how government functions? We're up, we're still telling them we can monetize every aspect of public service and get away with it. And that is not what we're about. Well, exactly. And to that point, I mean, there are questions about some other uh, outside New York, even so, uh, other uh, uh, nursing home COVID decisions that were made. There's questions about uh, Gretchen Whitmer and, and a, a similar policy. I, I'm, I'm from Michigan. I know that the people have a lot of uh, uh, questions about whether something similarly went on. And it's like we're not, because Cuomo has sort of evaded responsibility, it's like we're not having that broader conversation because we haven't even, you know, we haven't even gotten him yet. So we can't, we can't, I mean, we, he's out of office, but he's not been held, you know, criminally accountable for, for what <laughs> strikes a lot of people like obviously criminal conduct. Yeah, and people, this is, this is why I call it American elder side. Uh, we, Thousands, tens of thousands of older adults died in, the, in these facilities. But the public sentiment, we have a very ageist sentiment and culture mm -hmm. where we think older adults are disposable. And, and Cuomo himself come out, came out and publicly said, who cares? They were going to die anyways. Who cares where they died? This is the, those are exactly his words at a press conference. And he has further normalized and conditioned us to let us believe it's okay to kill old people in these facilities. And that is why we must coin this term as elder side. And everyone, starting with Como, must be held accountable because as we face a crisis moment in this country of, a, of an aging population that's going to quadruple in size the next 30 years, we have absolute zero solutions for long-term care. And this is the moment we need accountability and then we need to transform our Department of Health all across the country to make sure we get this correct. And the, and the part to me that always ratcheted this crime up to an even higher level was, was the money involved. That it, was, mm -hmm. it wasn't just covering it up for political purposes to, to defend himself against criticism from the public. It was so that this $5 million book wouldn't be undermined by the reality that his leadership had not been what he had, had said it was. But just on the raw politics, I'm, I'm curious if he decided to jump in. Like, is this a laughing stock of a campaign or is this something to take seriously? Again, I think he's just trying to distract us from focusing on the investigation around nursing homes. Uh, he's going to throw everything out there to get the, get the media and the public to focus on him and his reelection, trying to control the narrative. That's what he's good at. Um, if he does jump in, I think the data and polling shows he's polling worse than Donald Trump in New York State. Of 60, almost 70 percent of the public do not want him to be returning to public service. But a heads up race against the current governor, he's in striking distance. And I think that's because the current governor has not done enough to push back and hold Cuomo accountable. People think that he's the sa she's the same as, as the former administration, mm -hmm. that she, she was his lieutenant. And she hasn't said anything to, to speak about 
uh, accountability and, and, and getting to the bottom of what happened with the nursing home deaths. Mm-hmm. Well, Assemblyman, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time. Coming up, we have retired combat veteran and Democratic Missouri Senate candidate Lucas Kuntz joining us to discuss his thoughts on making the U.S. less dependent on foreign crude oil. Stick around.